Well, I decided to go for a stroll out in the country. Lo and behold, I just happened upon this old Mustang sitting right in the middle of a cow field. Let's see if we'll get it running and then drive it out of here. Yes, I am in the middle of a cow field. They were right over there the other day. They're, they're probably just over that hill now. Uh, but anyway, here's the car sets right in the middle of this cow field. And what's pretty cool is these little trees just surround it perfectly. I'm really surprised that it's not dented all to pieces with cows rubbing on it, but it, it's a pretty straight car from what I can tell. I don't have a lot of info on it. I don't know what year it is. Don't know what size motor it's got. Don't know how long it's been sitting here. But the story I got was a drifter come through and he wanted to trade this car for an old truck. So they did. They drove it right up here, parked it. That's where it's been sitting for however many years. I'm hoping once we get into it that there might be a registration in the glove box and that'll give us an idea of how long it's been sitting here. But uh, first thing I got to do we gotta cut all these little trees down and get them out of the way. But I can't do nothing with it until I get them gone. So let me get started doing that first. I started this saw before I left the house. It started pretty good, but I forgot to bring my gas can, so yeah, we might run out of gas. And I did not sharpen the chain, so it's gonna cut real good. <laughs> Run out of gas. Well, the chainsaw ran out of gas and dumb me forgot to bring any. So whilst I wait on somebody to bring me some, I'm gonna clear some of this brush out of the way, throw it over the fence. And let me zoom in. It appears to be a couple of donkeys coming to check out what I'm doing. Well, I got a fresh tank of gasoline. I got all of that brush moved except that one big and I gotta cut it up. Let's get the rest of these out of the way. Oh, my God. 
Well, I got all them little trees cut down. <laughs> I didn't realize there was that many. Good gracious. I don't like manual labor. I done told y'all I'm allergic to it. I start breaking out in the sweat. Anyway, I just realized that we're not going to get in the driver's side because missing the door handle right there. And the uh, key lock cylinder thing, it's been knocked out and I don't see any keys in it. So, probably don't have a key to get in the trunk right there. Let's see if this uh, passenger side door will open up. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Well, the glove box is already open. I don't see any paperwork in there. So, we still don't know how long this thing's been sitting here. Let me dig through some of this. Well, there's a baking pan. That's good. <laughs> a lot of uh, fence insulators. There's a couple of hubcaps. They don't even match. That's an LTD. I don't know why this seat ain't bolted down. There's the door panel for the driver's side over there. Um, headliner. It needs a little work. Uh, it is an automatic. Let's see what the floorboard looks like. I can see daylight through it right now. Oh, yeah. I'm just about pushed through there. So the floorboard over here is in bad shape. It's a little crunchy back there too. Um, I wish we could get that door open. Let me reach through, see if I can get it open. I'd like to at least see the miles on it. Well, I got the driver's side door open. So let's at least check the mileage on it. What do we have? What does the old old meter say? Old old meter says 55,076. Uh, I tell you what, I know the dash up here is cracked pretty bad, but this here, it actually looks very, very good. Huh. Anyway, I guess, I tell you what, let me run the VIN number real quick so we at least know what year it is. And then we'll pop the hood and see what we got under there. Well, according to the VIN, it's a 1973 with a whopping... 140 horsepower, <laughs> 302. Uh, whether or not this is a 302, I have no clue. It says 351, two barrel on the uh, air filter there. But, I mean, you know, somebody could have just thrown that on there or it could have had a motor swap. I'm not a Ford guy. I don't know how to tell, you know, what this is. So I'll have to study up on that and figure out how you figure that out. But for now, let's check the oil first and just see if it's got any in it. Yeah, it's got quite a bit. <laughs> it's way over full. And this car is, is leaning, you know, it's on a little little hill. So that means this thing is really, really full. And it smells like gas. So it may have a couple of gallons of gas in an oil pan. Uh, we'll have to change that if, you know, if it ain't stuck. Well, let's look at the battery now and see if maybe there's a date on it the one and the zero have been punched out uh remove month and year sold none of the months have been moved removed so one zero is that 2010 i don't know oh uh, there's a lo right there on the side of the battery i don't know what that means oh uh, anyway i think right now what we're going to do is i'm gonna put a wrench on that motor let's just see if it's stuck I just got done talking to the feller that did the trading for this car. And uh, his story is, back in the early 90s, uh, two fellers from Texas come through. They were doing some kind of construction work. They needed a pickup truck. So he traded them a 68 or 69 Ford truck for this car. <laughs> he said it was smoking like a freight train and it had absolutely no brakes whatsoever. But they traded him. And uh, they drove it right here, parked it, and she ain't been started or touched since. So that means, you know, roughly 30 years this car's been sitting here. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be stuck. So let me get y'all set up on the, on the tripod. And uh, we'll get a wrench on that crank see if this thing will turn over or not. As soon as I figure out what size this crank bolt is, I'm going to get a socket and a breaker bar on it. We're going to see if this thing will turn over or not. That gum, you can't hardly get to it. Ooh. Seven eights, bigger than seven eights. Let me go get my other socket set. And by the way, he told me them donkeys, 
They're just big old pets is all they are. One inch is too big. So let's see if a 15 sedan will fit. Ow! 15, 16 it is. Let me get my breaker bar. Well, it ain't on there good, but that'd be good enough. Oh, look at here. I want y'all look at that right there. This sucker's been sitting there 30 years and it's, it's turning over. If that ain't something right there, that is awesome. I was afraid this thing's gonna be stuck bad, but it ain't. This motor's gonna run. Oh yeah. Let me get my ratchet on it. That might make things a little bit easier. I'm trying to turn it around through the returns. Make sure we ain't got no valves hanging down or no big ridge. Alright, I've turned it over a couple of times. That darn fan has tore my hand all pieces too. And I didn't feel it hitting nothing, so I think what I might do now, let's just stick a battery in it, see if the starter works. All right, let's get this thing in here. Get it hooked up. And uh, let's see if that uh, start tire is going to work or not. I probably ought to clean these cables up. Eh, we'll just see what it does. Let me get my little gun hooked up here. Let's see if that starter works. <laughs> that's just awesome to me been sitting here that long ain't stuck starter works it's just well i believe this motor is going to run oh uh, let me get this breather off we'll look at the carburetor roster real quick now i'm going to tell y'all something else too all these little stumps that i got around here now y'all probably going to see me trip about fourteen thousand times and it's probably going to make me angry It ain't stuck, so that's good. It's very, very goodly. Not stuck. Well, hello, Mr. Praying Mantis. <laughs> the Praying Mantis right, right there, just below the lens on this camera. He's doing a little dance right now. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. Well, there's my little Praying Mantis, buddy. Do a dance, bud. <laughs> he's just barely doing it. Anyway, let me pull this cap off real quick, and we'll see. What we see under here will come off of there. <clears throat> the pointage is, eh, they're not too bad to be honest with you. I ain't sure that they need to be filed. Let me get, get you down in there. Yeah, I ain't sure they need to be filed. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Uh, like I said, that cylinder lock has been busted out. The guy uh, I was talking to a little while ago, the one that traded for it. He said a bunch of riffraff come through and they stole that emblem right there. That's what happened to the door handle. They stole it, they stole the gas cap. And I'm assuming they tried to bust the lock out of this car. Maybe gonna steal it, I don't know. But I'm gonna see if I can't stick a screwdriver in there and turn that thing and, uh, you know, get power going to the ignition. Let me see if I can do that. Well, it looks like the moo cows are interested in this old car running too. They all, just all of a sudden started coming up to me. I'm sitting in here trying to get this uh, screwdriver to turn this thing, and I believe it's going to work. I believe we're turning. I got the wire off the solenoid still, so let me go put that wire back on, and we'll see if this here will work. But listen to this. It's trying to, it's trying to honk. Anyway, let me get that wire back on that solenoid. Mr. Moo Cow, you better get on. Get on now. Get on now. Now get on. Don't be touching my tent. You old fat heifer. Get on. Shoo. Shoo fly. <laughs> get on out of here, fools. Get on. Leave my drinks alone too. Get on. Lord have mercy. I'm going to put all my stuff up, I guess. Shoo. Get on now. Yeah, get on out of here now. <laughs> He told me every one of them was a big old pet, and I'd believe it, because 
Every darn one of them done come up to me. <laughs> Get on now. Get away from this car. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being overran by the cows and the donkeys. <laughs> They're very interested in what I'm doing. Y'all get on now. Get on. I already got the wire back on the solenoid. Let's see if it worked. Nope. Nothing. Nothing at all. Let me try it again. Well darn. That's going to suck right there. Hmm. What's your wipers work? <laughs> Blinkers, do they work? I don't hear no blinking. Yeah, I do. The right one's blinking. Moo cow, get on. Well, I don't know why this don't want to work. Oh, uh, I don't know Fords, so there may be something else I got to have going on. Well, I'm going to leave it in the on position, and we'll go out here and... Uh, Let's just see if we got spark. All right, Mr. Donkeys. We'll see y'all later. Uh, let's see if this thing got any spark to it. <laughs> I ain't seeing any. But I ain't sure I got a good ground either. Let me ground it just a little bit better and see what we got. <laughs> no, sir. Well, I think what I'm going to have to do is go home and get my file, uh, file these points, and uh, then we'll see if we're getting any spark. I'll tell you what, let me uh, let me check this coal out, check continuity, see if I'm getting power up here to it. These crazy cows and doggies have made a full circuit around this field, and here they come again. They're making it to the pond right now. Anyway, uh, I got my meter out, and the coal check's good. I'm not getting any power to it. So, of course, I'm not getting any power here. So, I don't know what's going on. I, I don't know forward wiring. So, I might step back and scratch my head and do a little thinking and a little investigating and uh, see what I can figure out what's going on. Well, it took all of 10 seconds to find out what's wrong. Here is the wires that go to the coal. And I'm assuming they will probably connect to these wires right here. And the mice is, well... He's had a field day with a wiring on this car. So right now, just uh, you know, just to see if this thing's gonna spark and run. Well, first I'm gonna make sure none of these are grounding out. Then what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna hot wire it from the battery over to the coal and let's just see if we got spark. Well, I got her hot wired right there. It goes straight to the coal over there. I'm gonna hit the old start tar. Where did my spark plug go? Come here. I'm gonna hit the start tar. And let's see if we got spark now. <laughs> no, sir. We still do not have spark. So, let me investigate a little more. Well, upon further investigation, I do believe I found a problem. The points, they ain't opening. <laughs> so, I don't know if this little fella in here is, you know, wore down, broke off, or they just, you know, need to be set. So, let me see what I can do with that. Well, I set the gap, you know, just eyeballed it, and they're closing now. But the points, you don't want them to spark, but they will a little bit every time they open. Uh, this one here, it'll spark once and then it won't. Then you stop. You hit start again, it'll spark once and it won't. Uh, so what makes me think the condenser's bad, but also if, you know, if you file these, you need to clean them out piece of paper, a dollar bill, whatever. I think that's what's going on. So let me clean them out and put the cap back on and uh, let's just see if we're getting any kind of fire. Well, after a little bit more filing and cleaning and setting, I think we might have it. Let's, let's look at this plug and see what happens. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can see that, but she's firing every time now. I'm gonna put that plug back in there and just for giggles, Let's put some gasoline in that carburetor, see what it does. I'm pretty sure I've showed y'all this little extinction right there, little bitty fella. Uh, it, it's a lifesaver, I'm telling you, I need it right now because a regular size, regular length one, too long, 
and without one, I can't get to the socket with the ratchet. So this little filer, it comes in handy whenever you need it. All right, got that tight. Put the plug wire back on, and we're gonna see if this thing at least, at least fire a little bit. It may not run, but I'd like to hear it just hit a lick. Well, how are you supposed to get that on? I'm telling you, they didn't leave you no room on this sucker. Good gracious. Well, I don't know. Well, if this don't beat all I've ever seen right here, can't even get the dead blame spark plug wire on it. I guess it's on, I don't know. Let me fill this carburetor up. I'm assuming it's a vent hole. Like I said, I don't know forwards. Let's see what happens. Well, apparently it is. All right, give it a little bit to grow on. Let us see what happens. <laughs> y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? It just hit. <laughs> oh, y'all look at that. Oh, yeah. Let's give her a little more. Give her a little more. <laughs> I tell you what, let me take that fuel line loose from the gas tank. It probably ain't nothing in it, but just to be on the safe side, let me take it loose. Come on, there! It ain't pumping nothing because nothing come out. Let me fill this thing up some more. Oh, yeah, it's full. <laughs> Here we go. Accelerator pump is not pumping. I'm going to give her one more grank and the uh, I don't want to run more than a second or two. I think I'll call it a day. And we'll have to go get some parts. <laughs> Battery's about dead. Give it a little bit more. That carburetor is probably going to have to be took off and gone through. <laughs> Yep, that's it. All right. Just going by the way it's acting right now, I'm gonna say it's only running off the gasoline that I'm pouring down in the carburetor. That carburetor's probably stopped up, more than likely. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll get a kit, and then I'll go ahead and get the plug wires, plugs, and probably points, and we'll put all that on tomorrow. And judging by the way things acting right now, you know, been sitting here 30 years and trying to run. If I get all that done, it, it should fire right up and sit there and purr like a kitten. Somebody's on their way bringing me some tires and wheels uh, to see if they'll fit. Uh, while I'm sitting here waiting on them, I'm trying to figure out, you know, what motor's in this thing. It's supposed to be a 302 going by the VIN number. Well, according to the interwebs, that thing is either 351 Cleveland modified or 400. It's got eight uh, valve cover bolts. That's how I've determined that. Uh, the only other way, well, there's supposed to be some tags on it. There ain't no tags anywhere. Uh, there's casting numbers on the side of the block, but there's no way I can get to them. Uh, but it's definitely a 351 at least, so that's good to know. If y'all are wondering why I gathered all them little trees up and pitched them over the fence, well, some of them are wild cherry, and wild cherry trees are poisonous to cows, and the owner of them cows wanted me to you know, pitch them over the fence, make sure they didn't eat leaves. The leaves uh, actually contain cyanide. So yeah, that's why I did that. Well, it's the next day. It's trying to rain me out, but uh, I'm gonna at least pull this carburetor off and we're gonna take it to the house and uh, take it apart. And I'm gonna see if I can find a number on it and uh, get a kit from O'Reilly's. That, uh, that tag right there, it don't tell me nothing. I looked it up last night. They're supposed to be stamped somewhere on the base. So let's pull that off and uh, we'll take it home and clean it up. La -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. 
kick down, let's kick down, and it ain't even on. The kick down, it ain't even on. Get this here off. Get off, get off. What in the devil? Boy, they've got this rigged up. <laughs> what in the world? But it does not want to come off. Come off of that little buddy. There you go. I want y'all to look at this. This is their adapter to go from PVC to the carburetor. It's a spark plug boot with a flare fitting stuck in it. And then the PCV hose goes on top of that to fit in there. What in the world? That's something like I'd do. Oh, I gotta get the accelerator cable loose. Accelerator cable. Lord have mercy. Y'all see the fresh cow pie right here in my way. <laughs> By the way, last night when I started editing the uh, video for this, I used DaVinci Resolve software and you open it up and start a new project, you have to name it. Well, I decided to name this one Mustang because, you know, we're out here in the middle of a cow field. So I think that's what this car is it's going to be called, Mustang. I need a little croissant. I don't have no sockets. Right size, so we'll have to use a lead blade wrench. There's one. There's one nut. Mm, come off, Mr. Carboroster. All right. All right. Well, I got the old carburetor tore apart, and it's pretty dirty down inside. And as I suspected, the jets, well, they're completely stopped up. This here, I don't know what this is. Uh, maybe it's a power valve? I don't know. Uh, my main concern is this accelerator pump. It's shot. You can see the diaphragm. It's shot. Uh, if it wasn't for that, I'd put it back together. Clean it up, put it back together, and put it back on the car. Uh, the problem is I don't know what carburetor this is. It had this sticker right here on it And then down here it says remanufactured by Holly. This number means nothing from what I can tell And there should be a number here. It is That number means nothing from what I can tell So the only thing I know left to do is Look at uh, some carb kits and if it looks like the parts will fit then that's the one I'm gonna have to get so, uh, I guess I'll get on uh, O'Reilly's website and do that. And uh, the, the rain, it's, well, it's actually stopped right now. It ain't raining that hard, so if I can find a kit for this, put it back together, then uh, we'll go back and work on that old car, and we'll get it running good today. Well, I'm back from Ireland. I got me a little carburetor roster kit right there. I got every hole and passage clean that I can find. By the way, uh, that's a kit for a 2100. So I'm assuming this is a 2100. The only thing I went by was, uh, where is it at? The accelerator pump here and the power valve here. They look the same, so that's the kit I got. Uh, anyway, let me get this back together and we'll go over and get this put back on that car. Well, if I can get this hood open, we'll get this carburetor on. And might put some plug wires and plugs in it too. Keep forgetting to all oh, these hinges. Let me put this awesome, <laughs> this awesome PCV back on here. That's pretty cool. Tell you what, I'm gonna take that kick down back off because it's making that throttle hang open. And I really really don't want that to be happening all right well i got the cover roster back on and i think <laughs> i think we need some new plug wires and the mice is sort of ate that in the way so let's uh put plug wires on it. i got plugs too i'm really really not looking forward to it because you can't hardly get to them but let me see if i can get them swapped out oh my goodness gracious I don't know that these plugs are going to come loose. What in the world? I just broke that one. Pretty near sure it did. Oh, 
Oh yeah, we broke loose then. Oh yeah. Woo. It's gonna take two or three hours just to change these plugs. Ooh. Well, apparently I got the wrong plugs, as you can see. They're nowhere near the same. This tapered seat. If this is a tapered seat, it's way down here. Yeah, they're just not the same. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get all of them out, and then I guess I'll go back to O'Reilly's and get the right one. Well, this crazy cow right here, just as soon as I cross the fence, literally come running up to me. She won't go away. Get on now, moo cow. Anyway, I just got back from uh, Ireland again, and uh, I think I got the right spark plugs this time. So let's get them in, get the wires on, and maybe get the points changed. And uh, let's see if this thing's gonna run. Well, it appears the whole dad blame herd's coming up here now. <laughs> I just hope they don't try to run over me. Y'all get on now. Let me get these spark plugs back in this car. Get on now. Get on. You want some honey bun? You got one? No. <laughs> they feed her honey bun. <laughs> I can honestly say I've never changed spark plugs whilst I was surrounded by cows. <laughs> Wondering if I was gonna get trampled or not. <laughs> this is the first for me. Well, here's the first one. She's still here. <laughs> I'm being surrounded by cows right now. That's a big, uh, that's a big headed one right there. Goodness. No, now leave that car alone. Get on. Yeah. Now y'all need to get on, get. No, quit licking me. Get on. <laughs> Leave that alone. <laughs> get on. Oh, they're much. They're going to they gonna tear my camera up. <laughs> get on. Shoo. You know, I originally thought. It's gonna take a long time to get these plugs in and out. Shoot, I had them out in 15 minutes. About five minutes and I'm done with this side just about. Not bad. Get away from the camera. Lord, there's flinging cow slobber all over the place. Get on away from the camera. Yeah. Now it appears Mr. Donkey and his buddy want me to pet him a little bit. Come here, come here. Or not. <laughs> My goodness, the original one, she's still hanging around. I tell you what, this right here makes Mustang just that much more appropriate, I guess. <laughs> Mr. Donkey, what are you doing, bud? Are you being nosy? Goodness, look what I said of ears. <laughs> Come here. What are you doing? You just don't want to go away, do you? Huh? You just don't want to go away. <laughs> Come here, Mr. Donkey. Come here. What are you doing, bud? Come here. You doing all right? Big old floppy ears. Goodness, you got some big old ears. <laughs> Lord have mercy now. <laughs> now he's following me. <laughs> Get on out of here. By the way, I just looked at the camera and it took almost 12 minutes to change the plugs. <laughs> that's while I was being harassed by cows and donkeys too, so that's not bad. No, oh, now get out of my tool bag. Get on. Get on. Leave your tools alone. Get on out of here. That's that same crazy fool that showed up first come running at me. <laughs> She's over here nosing in my darn tool bag. Get your butt on, girl. Get on. Ah. Uh -uh. Get out of my tool bag. Look at her. Get out of that tool bag right now. Get on. Trying to get my darn hammer out. Get your butt out of here. Get. Get on. Get on. Shoo. That crazy fool has done got slobber all over my dad blame hammer handle. You nasty thing. Get on out of here. Leave that bag alone too. Get on. Get on. Can I help you, ma'am? Is there something you <laughs> is there something you need? Well, there she goes. I guess the crazy heifer got tired of fooling with me. All right, last wire. 
now that the sparking plug wires are on, I reckon let's change some pointages out. Then maybe we can make this thing run. All right, I got me a new set of points. I got them eyeball gapped. As soon as I get this back on, we're gonna fill the carburetor up and we're gonna hit the starter, see what happens. All right, let me fill this carburetor up real quick. A little bit to grow on. All right, here we go, let's see what it does. <laughs> It's gonna sit there and almost idle what it's gonna do. <laughs> That's just pretty wild right there. I didn't even touch the accelerator. It didn't get a pump shot or nothing. It's just, it's wild right here. Probably done run that bowl out of gas. Let's fill it up again. All right, let's try it again. <laughs> Fill it up one more time and fire it up. But that coil is getting pretty warm because I don't have it run through no ballast resistor. I don't even know where it's at on here. So we'll run it one more time. I want to walk around back and see what it sounds like. And I believe we'll call it a day. Fire in the hole. <laughs> pretty amazed that it, it ain't smoking a bit. I think it's got a miss. I may have some wires crossed. Uh, yeah, it's got a miss. But it ain't smoking, not one bit. Pretty amazing. Yeah, it's definitely got a miss. Uh, I'll have to look at that. Well, I thought I might have had a couple of plug wires right there crossed. I checked it, and they're right according to the fire and order that's on the intake. So I ain't real sure what's going on there with a the miss. Uh, it could be cap and rotor, but I don't think so. I didn't even think about getting a new cap and rotor. Just completely slipped my mind. Uh, could be a brand new spark plug bad. Ain't no telling. Uh, I did just find this. Where did it go? Oh, right here. The vacuum line, it was hung down there. It ain't hooked to anything. Coming off this T off the manifold. I don't know if it goes to a vacuum modulator on that uh, transmission or not. That'll make it miss at idle, possibly. Uh, we'll just have to look at all that tomorrow. My battery's done went dead. I done pulled it out. We're gonna take it home and charge it. The coil, she's getting warm. I got uh, 12 volts running right to it. So I think first thing tomorrow, We'll uh, 
we'll get all this wiring straightened out and have everything like it's supposed to be. Then we'll start it up and uh, see if we can't find the miss. And uh, well, we got a whole lot more stuff to do. Got to change oil. Uh, got to look at the brakes. Got to look at the fuel system. Got to make sure the transmission is going to uh, work. Fill it up with water. Hopefully the thermostat ain't stuck. There's still a bunch to do before we can drive this thing out of the field here. I believe we can do it though. Well, I think we'll start the day by trying to figure this wiring out right here. Uh, I might not figure out most of it, but I'd like to at least get that coal wired in like it's supposed to and possibly the starter saw annoy. If I can get them two things done, I'll be happy. Let us get us started this with the wiring this. I don't know what this is here. It's on the very back. Oh, I bet that's oil pressure. You don't have to try to fix it. Yep, yep, yep. Let us see what we see. Very interesting. All right, I believe I got uh, some of these wires figured out. Let me trace that solenoid back. I know where the ignition wire is now, so that's good. Solenoid, where you go, where you go, solenoid. I forgot to bring my dad blame battery this morning. So, I can't do a whole lot of wiring. I do believe I can get them two wires there, like they're supposed to be, hopefully anyway. Then I'll have to go get the battery later. All right. I'm pretty near sure. Pretty near sure. At least want to go right here. Well, I figured out where the uh, coal wire is. I got it wired back together. And I believe I got the oil pressure sending unit wire back on where it goes. But the rest of those wires, is, I think four down in there. They don't get, well, one of them has 12 volts when you turn the key on. I cannot find a starter solenoid wire anywhere. I think it uh, used to be a column shift and it's now a floor shift. And, you know, I made sure that I turned this to where park would be. Still won't start or won't, I can't get any 12 volts on that wire. Uh, any telling, there's, there's mouse turds. I mean, a pile of them right there. <laughs> They liable to chew all kind of wires into under that dash. So we ain't gonna worry about that right now. Cause I'm telling you, I can spend days on electrical. It just sends you on all kind of wild goose chases. I think now what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's focus on the fuel system. I stuck the camera down in the gas tank. It, I can't really tell, but it looks like it's got a lot of trash in it. So I don't think we're gonna fool with the gas tank. What I'm gonna do, then I'm gonna pull the hose off the fuel pump down here and uh, hook my gas tank up to it and if it pumps, then that's what we're going to use. I'll just set a gas tank inside somewhere, strap it to the top, <laughs> wherever I got to. But I need to jack the car up to get to that fuel pump. So I guess now I'm going to do what I've been dreading. <laughs> we're going to check on these brakes and see how bad they are. Well, the master cylinder is about like I thought it'd be. Empty, with a bunch of rust in it. The pedal was stuck. I give it a good stomp and it broke loose. So, chances of this master cylinder working are slim, but hey, you never know. I'm gonna clean that out, put a little fluid in it, and let's just see what happens. Well, I've scraped most of that uh, rust loose. I ain't really got no way to get it out. Yeah, let me try to blow it out. <laughs> Dang it. This front reservoir is pretty doggone rusty. So, it may not, it may not do anything. Let me get some flurred and put some flurred in it. What do I do with it? And we will see what happens. Well, I got it full of fluids and working the pedal and I'm getting nothing. I'm getting a little fluid moving in the back reservoir with the front one. I'm getting no movement. So I'm gonna say that master cylinder shot. But just for giggles, I'm gonna open up all the bleeders and just see what happens. Let us see what happens. Driver's side drum, it's rolling. It's rolling very good. I wanna jack this one up. See if it rolls. If it does, then the 
we got half the battle won. I believe I have upset some waspers too, because holy crap, yeah. I got four or five flat around me. Yeah, I ain't doing that. You better get on. <laughs> get on now. Sorry, sucker. God. Well, I got one of them. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this jacked up real quick. Does it roll? No, sir. Not at all. Let me get my hammer. Ooh. Ow, there they are right there. <laughs> up in the frame right there there's several of them i might be a grown man but i'm scared to death of anything that can sting me i tell you that right now get on hey hey they are quite aggressive they ain't got a thing to spray them with either there's several of them in there Maybe I ought to slow them down at least. Well, my camera got too hot out in the sun, so it quit on me. But this one here, it is a loose now. Uh, I've whooped on the back ones a little bit. I haven't jacked them up yet to see if they're broke loose. Right now, what I'm doing is breaking all the bleeders loose. Well, I'm taking them out, actually, making sure they're not stopped up. After I do that, I'll come back here and jack his back end up, and we'll see if these are loose or not. Well, I whooped on this in a little bit. Let me see if I can put 250 pounds on it and make it break loose. No, sir. No, sirree. These back ones are going to be, well, they're going to be a pain, what they're going to be. Woo. It's loose from the axle, but the shoes are stuck to the drum. And, well, I don't know, man, I have to bust the drum off, I don't know. What I want to do right now is just forget about these back ones and the other ones doing the same thing. Uh, we might go ahead and put the tires on it, put it in gear if the transmission works, see if we can't break them loose that way. But let me show you, let me show you what I got on the master cylinder then. I took both the lines loose there coming out of the master cylinder. And that front one had like a bunch, a bunch of air come out of it. Well, you just saw a bubble right there come out of the front, uh, front reservoir. Uh, anyway, had a bunch of air come out, put it back on, and went in there and pumped the pedal. Well, y'all ain't gonna believe me unless I show you. I now have brake pedals. It don't go down maybe two inches. So, uh, if it's like Chevrolet, which I'm sure it is, the front, uh, back reservoirs, the front brakes, that's all I need, one or the other. But here's something else that happened. <laughs> Let me show you this. That dad blame seat broke. <laughs> She's laid back as far as she can go, just about. So, I might have to be sitting on a bucket when I drive this thing out here. I don't know. Is it on? Is the camera on? The camera? It is on. There's a bunch of geese right there at the edge of that pond. Well, right there in the middle of the screen. That's a blue heron. He just flew in. I guess he's hunting for some fish now. Well, I got me some tires on this side over here now. And they're gorgeous. Uh, I just filled the carburetor up with some gas. And I'm going to start it up and see if it'll move. I don't think it will because there's no transmission fluid showing on the dipstick. But I'm going to give it a try anyway, just see if it'll move. Fire in the hole. Well, that's interesting. I don't know if y'all saw that or not, but it lunged backwards when I give it gas. Oh, uh, I've got it all the way forward, which should be park. 
as you can see right there but apparently it's not in park and that's probably why it won't start with the key switch because the park neutral switch is not made so i'm gonna have to get up under the car now look at uh the shifter i'm surprised it even moved because there is no fluid showing on that dipstick at all on the transmission and it was lunging you know we'd go in gear and come out uh so definitely gonna need some fluid but anyway let me get up under it and look at that shifter Upon further investigation, I do believe there's something wrong with the transmission. Uh, I tried adjusting the shifter right there and that didn't help. And then right here is the shift rod and the shift lever. I took the rod loose and run the lever coming out of the transmission to run it through all the gears. And it does not want to stay in park. So that's probably the issue. So right now it's just gonna have to be what it is. And also, and oh, by the way, see all this grease? Uh, it's possible it's got a pretty bad rear main leak that may be why it was parked but it's the whole transmission and transmission tunnel it's it's pretty nasty well i'm up under the front of the vehicle now looking at this fuel pump where did it go where did it go oh, right here i'm gonna take this line loose and put another line on it run it into a gas tank and see if it pumps if it does great i don't expect it to but it'd be wonderful if it did and also whilst I'm down here, I'm changing the Earl and the Earl filter. And let me tell you this, uh, laying on little tree stumps, that's not very comfortable at all. Whilst I drain the Earl's out, I'm gonna put at least a couple of quarts of transmission fluid in it. Probably gonna need more than that with the way it's acting, but I'm gonna put two in it at least. Now that I got the Earl's drained out of it, I'm gonna put some Earl's back in it. Then we're gonna check that fuel pump and see if it's gonna pump for us or not. I don't know how much this thing holds. I'm gonna put five quarts in it and then that should be enough for now. That should do it. Now let me get down there and get that uh, fuel line loose. I'm gonna get another fuel line hook to it. Let me stick it in the gas can and see if it'll run. Where did the, oh, <laughs> right there. I'm telling you, I'd lose my head if it was not attached to my body. That ain't even a joke. Well, I got a hose run from the uh, fuel pump to my little gas can here. And I got the carburetor filled up with gas gasolines. I'm gonna set y'all up right here somewhere. And y'all watch that fuel line right there. Tell me if it uh, starts pumping any gas out. All right, let's see if this fuel pump's gonna pump anything. Still trying to move. Let me put it in neutral. We are not pumping anything, it looks like. No, sir. Well, I kind of figured we'd need a fuel pump, so... Uh, I'll have to go to O'Reilly's and get one. I think I'm gonna call it a day. I got some other stuff I got to attend to. So we'll pick this back up tomorrow with a, hopefully a new fuel pump. Well, I decided to go ahead and pull this uh, fuel pump out before I go home. I, I can take it with me and make dang sure I get the right one. And the only way I know to get to it is take a power steering off. Where you get to this top bolt. Get to the top bolt. I got the top bolt. And there it is. Well, I'm back for what I'm hoping is the final day of working on this old moose thing. I got a fuel pump. I'm going to put it on here in a minute. And then uh, we'll have to rig us up a fuel system. And by that, I may strap in the gas tank to the top of the car. Then we'll let it down and hopefully, uh, you know, start it up. And we'll put it in reverse forward and rock it back and forth. And hopefully those back brakes will break loose. Uh, I haven't fooled with the adjusters on them yet. I might go ahead and do that first. And then hopefully, you know, they'll break loose and we'll get this car out here. So let's get busy. I did not bring a bit of RTMV with me. So that old gasket looks pretty good. So what we'll do, we'll just leave it on there and put the new pump in its place. Where did I put my bolt? Oh, here are my bolts. I got the bolts. I see the bolts. Well, the only thing you can get on this 
new fuel pump is a short socket. I don't have any with me. All I got is deep well. And you can't get a wrench on it because this bracket right here is in the way. So I'm having to take this bracket off. Then I can tighten that bolt. Then I gotta put this back on. Well, I hope the rest of the day goes a little bit better than this. Ooh. All right, fuel pump's on, power steering pump is back on. Now I gotta go down below and uh, hook up the fuel lines. And then uh, I guess we'll fool with them back brakes some more. Well, I forgot to hit record on the camera, but as you can see, maybe there's fuel all over here. So fuel pump is a pumping now. So put this line back on. I'm gonna let it sit here and run a little while because I haven't been able to warm it up. I don't know if thermostat's going over. Say, so, let me do that. And my fuel line's leaking. This hose is really old and it's really hard. So those little clamps there, they're having a hard time sealing it. So I think I got some fuel line this size. So I'm gonna change it out and maybe that'll take care of this problem. All right. Let's try this again. Iron the hole. We'll let it sit here in the idle, warm up. I'm gonna put some water in it. Hopefully that thermostat's gonna open up though. There was a wire right there next to the distributor. I didn't know what it went to. I think I just found it. it goes through the temperature sensor. So I'm gonna hook that up. Well, I wasn't able to fix the uh, temperature sending unit. I don't know if it's the gauge or if I got the wrong wire. Uh, anyway, I couldn't get it fixed. So you've been sitting there island, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Oh, and I don't know if I told you or not. That vacuum leak, fixing it, that fixed the mess. She's sitting there purring like a kitten now. And uh, let's walk around back to see what it sounds like. Not too bad. Uh, let's let's set y'all up on the camera stand, and y'all tell me how it sounds. You know what's odd? <laughs> I don't even hear an exhaust leak. Not not one exhaust leak. The lifters, they're still tapping pretty bad, and uh, you stick your head under it, and that transmission's making a clacking and clinking noise. It may be on this last leg, I don't know. But, oil pressure gauge works just fine. It was up there around high, it's dropped about halfway now, that's okay. Of course, temperature gauge don't work. I don't know if alternator works or not. Let's put a meter on it and see. 17.29, that's, that's just a wee bit high. It is now. Other than a little bit of lifter noise, she's running and sounding pretty doggone good. About the only thing left to do is get in it, put it in gear, and see if those back brakes will pop loose. So, fingers crossed. I don't know if y'all heard that, but she's pinging pretty bad when you stomp on the gas. We'll have to look at that, check the timing out maybe. Uh, this one over here broke loose. It was spinning the tire. So that's good, at least one of them broke loose. So I guess, let me get this side jacked up over here and uh, we'll go to working on it, see if we can't get it broke loose. I'll hit the adjuster and see if that helps any. Also, man, that thing going into gear, especially reverse, golly. It's not like transmission's gonna fly apart. 
uh, if, if we make it home, I think we'll be doing pretty good. Well, fellas, I finally had to do it. I had to bust that drum off. It just would not come off. The, the shoes, they were glued. I mean, they wasn't coming loose. Anyway, I got it back on the ground. I'm gonna get in it and we're gonna test the brakes and see if I got any. Hopefully I do. If I do, then it's gonna be about time to drive this thing out of here. I'll tell you something else I'm gonna do too. I've already cleaned all the big stuff out of the inside. It's pretty disgusting in here. There's mouse duty, just, I mean, mounds of it. I got allergies real bad. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not driving home with that flying around in my face. So I'm gonna go home and get a generator and shop back, come back and we're gonna clean the inside of this car out. Let us see if we have any breakages. <laughs> got enough brakes yes sir yes sir it's got plenty of brakes to get it home i'm not gonna be doing 90 mile an hour so uh let me go get a shot back and clean that thing out and we'll drive it out of this cow field raise your hand if you've ever shot back to car out in the middle of a cow field <laughs> i just got done with doing that it cleaned up a lot better than i thought it would hopefully that stuff won't be blowing all up in my nose and everything else but i reckon the only thing left to do is strap this gas tank to the top of it. I gotta clean the windshield, put that air filter on, and we're fixing to bring this thing out of this field. Well, I got everything done, I believe. Gas tank strapped down. She's been sitting here warming up about 10 minutes or so. Uh, She's been sitting here 30 years. She ain't gonna sit here no longer.
Operation Rescue Mustang complete. The old girl did pretty good. Road and drove great. The steering was good and tight. I'm telling you, it wouldn't take a whole lot to make this a driver get it back on the road. The brakes, pumped them a couple of times and they were surprisingly well. Of course, I would go through the entire brake system and make it brand new. Uh, it needs shocks. It bounced quite a bit in the back every time you hit a bump. Definitely, definitely needs a new seat that uh, stands upright. That was not very comfortable driving like that. Uh, transmission, it's gonna have to come out. The one, two shift is great. The two, three shift has a real big flare. And of course it won't stay in park. And we got a little tree growing through the bumper. I'm gonna leave that for now. Anyway, like I said, it wouldn't take a whole lot to get this back on the road. Well, that was a pretty fun little adventure. I can honestly say I have never rescued a car while surrounded by cows. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe. Check out my merch. Share it with your friends. And until next time, go do something. Blurp, blurp. <laughs>